Hello guys, in this tutorial I want to speak about photorealism and how to create photorealistic materials for your scenes. So first let's talk about material properties and which properties does materials have. So I created this JPEG to, uh, like a conspect for you. So every material needs to have reflectivity because in the real world there is no material which doesn't have reflectivity on it but it can be really small amount of reflectivity that we can think that this material doesn't have it but uh, in real life every material has a little bit at least at least a little bit of reflectivity so maybe uh, some part of the material is reflective much more reflective than the other part and if it's like this we're gonna use different reflect reflectivity maps on this material and the second is glossiness and it controls basically the how glossy is material is for instance it is is it mirror or it's something like metallic reflections or it has some dirt on it that affects the glossiness of the material and next parameter is index of reflection and it basically controls the how metallic is your object is for instance if your object is metal you can use the higher values on this index of reflection reflection value and if your material is plastic you can use 1.6 or less in your material uh, don't worry I'm just speaking about this idea uh, this basically and then I'm gonna show you which uh, what each of these parameters does to your material and the refraction is basically if the light goes through your material so your material is transparent or your material is glass this parameter controls how refractive is your material and this pump and displacement controls the highs um, basically the displacement of your materials it means if you have small dents and small scratches on your material you're gonna add black and white material to your black and white texture to your material to give this pump and displacement to your material and the transparency of your material and it's basically controls the light which sucks your material for instance if you have some organic materials you need to use transparency on your materials because all organic materials like skin or for instance potato or any kind of transcluse material it absorbs the light and it gets bright inside and that's why we need to use this transcluency on our material if we create organic materials okay let's go back to our scene so this is the scene we're gonna work on and let me show you entirely what it consists of so it's basically box I deleted this part in order for us to see it <coughs> and I created three windows to let light come in and this is it basically and I'm gonna I use Corona Sun and I use Corona Sky as my environment and as you see we have some nice sky here okay so let's go back to our camera view and now we're gonna create floor material let's close it okay first let's select our floor polygon and give material to it so let's create new material choose corona material and assign material to our floor let's change the color to see if it applied it applied great let's change the name to the floor material okay now let's add our diffuse color and I'm gonna use this texture as a diffuse map and it's basically floor tiles and it has some blank space in between them so let's drag this material to our diffuse slot okay and it applied automatically and maybe you think that it's great but it can be much more better so let's first give 
reflectivity to our material so let's make it one and as you see it immediately gets reflective but for instance let's go back to our image for instance our image our tiles can be reflective but the reflection is not so high it's not like a mirror so it needs to be glossy matte a little bit matte and the parts in between them doesn't need to have reflection because actually there is nothing there so we need to change our material somehow to let 3d max know that these parts doesn't need to have reflection and that's why there is a slot for us to put black and white map on it and basically the which part of the map is white is gonna have full reflectivity and which part of the image is black doesn't will not have any reflectivity but if the any part of the image is gray for instance it will have a little bit less reflectivity for instance we can do it so here if we change it to black there is no reflectivity if we change it to gray there is a little bit reflectivity and if we change it to white the reflectivity increases so we need to create now this black and white map that we talked about so let's open the Photoshop and start creating our maps okay Photoshop is open let's drag this into the Photoshop okay so what we need to do is change it to grayscale and now we need to give a little bit contrast to it to get rid of these white and gray areas and to keep only black blacks in between them so we press ctrl and m or we can go to image adjustment curves okay and now we increase these parts of the image and lower these parts and let's adjust it so that unless we see it is okay actually it's okay so these parts of the image it will be less reflective but it's okay but mainly these black areas will not be reflective at all so we can actually do like this we can just select the paintbrush increase the size and choose white and we can just paint on let's go back and decrease the hardness of our brush so let's paint a little bit so that these middle parts are reflective we just need 3d max to stop creating reflections in between the materials in between the tiles so we can create these white areas by ourselves without losing the information okay it's basically I'm creating this by hand in order to in order for you to have idea what you can do okay now I'm happy with this results and now I'm gonna save this map press ctrl shift and s and type reflect on map okay so as I said before what it's gonna do is make these white areas reflective and make these black areas non-reflective so let's open 3d max and add this reflection map to our reflection slot and now we can see that these parts doesn't have any reflection and to see it clearly let's turn off diffuse and look here as you see it's clearly visible that these parts doesn't have any reflection maybe we just need to come closer or change the view to see it better okay 
So this is the reflectivity parameter of our material and we fix it as we think it's good. Okay, the next parameter was uh, ref glossiness. So let's control, let's change the glossiness to see what happens. It's if it's one, it's reflective as a mirror. But if we decrease this glossiness parameter, it, the reflection gets blurry. So this is much better now. Maybe we need to decrease it more. Okay. And as you see, this part still doesn't have any reflections. Okay, but we have a map slot for the glossiness parameter two, and it's basically for the materials which have different glossiness value in different areas. And actually, this parameter gives much more realism than any parameter. Because in real life, when we look to the surfaces of our objects or any kind of objects, these surfaces have imperfections on them. And these imperfections such as scratches, dust, dirt, and wear, these all parameters affect the glossiness of our object and our objects ha will have different glossiness value on the different areas of the surface. And that's why we need to create this black and white material and send it to the glossiness slot. And what it does basically, so let's go back to Photoshop and open histogram or history, go back. So we, what we need to create is change this to black and white and we can use this image as it is now so the white areas is gonna be much value it's gonna have much value of reflective uh, glossiness and the parts which is black is gonna have less value of glossiness for instance the parts which is real black is gonna have zero the parts which is gray is gonna have 0 0.5 for instance and the parts which are white is gonna have the value of one so maybe we just in need to increase the contrast a little bit or increase the brightness at the same time which adjustments curves so increase it okay this is good now let's save this material as a glossiness map okay now let's add our glossiness map and see what happens so let's maybe we just drag and drop this okay and as you see it has nice variations in the reflection glossiness but it's still too low because we reflections all reflections get blurry so in order to increase this we need to make it more bright and when you have map here these numbers won't work anymore because the value will be taken from this map and now what we can do we can go back to Photoshop we can increase the brightness and save file and go back and replace this material or we can uh, do our adjustment right in 3ds max so we open our glossiness map, we go down and open this output panel and enable color map and press this button to see the texture. And this is basically the texture we created in Photoshop. So now we need to make it brighter. And basically these two parameters control the brightness and darkness value. So select all of all these two dots and right click and choose Bezier corner and now we can move these points and now we can adjust our values so as you see when we make it brighter the reflections get clean and we make when we make it darker reflections get blurry
so this is as you see so what we need to do is make it a little bit brighter something like this okay and the cool thing about this reflection glossiness map that uh, each area every area is kind of different glossiness value on it well, for instance look at here and if you give uh, more contrast to it it will look like there is some water on it so let's see it let's make it darker and make these parts brighter and now it will look like some parts of the floor is wet but now it's better to decrease the contrast and make some nice bright reflection gloss on this material okay good now what we need to do is check this index of reflection parameter so our object is not metal and that's why we are gonna use standard index of reflection on this material and if we change this for instance to 99 our floor is gonna be metal and as you see but we don't need the metal floor we need to have stone floor and that's why we change it back to 1.5 or maybe 1.6 so you can experiment it with that if I always when you when I use the glossiness value too low I increase this value maximum to 2 so that the reflections is visible okay now what we need to do is have a look to refraction parameter and basically this is how glass is your object so our material is not glass and that's why we're not gonna change any reflection parameter and basically if we change the refraction our floor will be glass and that's why we reversed our change and go back to the zero okay now is what we need to have is displacement and bump so basically what we have here are only image so if we change this delete this or turn them off we're not gonna have any bumps here and what we need to do is give some information to the bank channel so that Max will understand that which part of the image is going down and which part of the image is going up so in order to create this we need to go back here Photoshop and it's actually the same with the other map parameters like the, the brighter the image the higher the value and the darker the image the lower the value so all these black areas will go down and all these black areas will go up but these gray areas have, will have some up and down too but we don't want it to have we just want our intersections go down and nothing else and that's why we need to create more contrast on it so let's go back image adjustments curves and let's make it brighter and something like this okay so let's we can go to the dodge tool and like make it make on press some on these bright areas to make it brighter this brush basically affects only the dark areas and leaves the brights the same okay this is fine so let's save this press ctrl and shift and s save it as bump map and we can use this map as a displacement map too and now i'm going to show you how 
we can do it. So let's go back to our folder, find the bump map and drag and drop this to the bump slot and let's see what it changes. And as you see it changed our material and our material now has nice details on it. So let's go here. But the problem with this bump map is this bump map is only the lights. It plays only with the lights and actually there's nothing going up and down. It's like faking the up and downs for us. But it's the good part. It doesn't force your Max to use its full power. And as you see, it's not going down, it's just faking it. And if we look it from here, we don't see that something goes inside, goes down, okay? So it looks nice. It doesn't make your scene render longer, but it's fake. So if you want it to show it real close, the bump map won't work for you. So if you showing your material really close, you need to use displacement map. It's basically the same. You just throw this map down to the displacement slot, choose instance and turn off the bump. And now <coughs> our image is really going up our material. And as you see, we have this height here. And displacement map doesn't have any values here because this is controlled from here. So what we need to do is make these black areas go down. But this time we have max level of 10 millimeters. It means that the white areas go up. So we make it zero and change the minimum level to negative, for instance, five. Now these areas went down. We can see it clearly from here that it's really gone down. And in order to create these nice details, because it's like draft, so we need to go to the render settings, go back to performance and change the screen size pixels on displacement to one. And now it will render longer, but will look much better, as you see. Okay, but I guess the negative five is real high number, so we change it to negative one. Okay, now we have nice details. Okay, so let's go and activate the reflection slot. Also activate the reflection glossiness slot and activate the diffuse slot. And this way we have nice floors, nice floor material with really nice details on it. And if you think this material slows your computer down, you just can turn off displacement and turn on bump map. It will give you nearly the same result with no forcing your computer, no slowing down your computer. And let's have a look how it behaves under different conditions. So I really like this material because it has nice details and nice reflection value and nice reflection glossiness value on it. It basically looks like real stone floor. And we basically created all the materials from the one image. And I guess you like this material too. You can change this material as you wish and Basically, if you got the idea, now you can create your own physical, physically right materials. 
I would like to change the sky. You can see the, our material here and it's really nice. So let's change the sky and see how it reacts to the different sky and different environment. And for this I want to go here and find the current bitmap. And now let's go to your, your HDR. For instance, let's open this image. Let's turn this off. Let's open our environment and move it there. And now let's turn off the sun because this HDR image has sun on it. And now let's increase the exposure value from the, our camera parameters. So because it was sun and it was really high intensity light here, I decreased the exposure down. Now let's make it zero or maybe let's increase it. And let's see how our material reacts, reacts to the new HDR that we created. I actually really like this material really much. It has nice reflections and for instance if you think that reflections are really low you can go back to your material and increase the reflection glossiness on it so let's go back and go to reflection glossiness slot go to the output and make it brighter and by making brighter you increase the glossiness value of your material and now it has nice reflections so you don't need to go to Photoshop to change everything you can change some parameters right inside of the 3ds max so we can just select this and hide unselected see how it reacts let's decrease exposure we can give contrast from here okay and see it's really nice We can activate this bloom and let's increase it to five to five. We have nice bloomy reflections. And because we used maps, as you see these parts is really going down and it doesn't have any reflections here. Okay, let's render it and see how it looks like. Let's make it bigger. So I really like this material and I hope you like this material and this tutorial too. And I hope you learned a lot of from this tutorial and now you can create your own physically correct materials and see you on next tutorials. Thank you for watching. Bye.